اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اولم یل اللذین قفرو ان السماوات والارد کانتا رتکن ففتقنہما و جعلنا من المائی کل شیئن ہے افلا یؤمنون بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ربش رحلی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل الاغدت من لسانی یفکہ قولی My respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May peace, blessings, and mercy of Almighty Allah be on all of you. The topic of this evening's talk is Quran and modern science conflict. Or conciliation. The Holy Quran is the last and final revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which was revealed to the last and final messenger Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. For any book to claim that it's a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for any book to claim it's a word of Almighty God, it should stand the test of time. It should prove itself to be the word of God in all the ages. Previously, it was the age of miracles, mojza. A miracle is any unusual event for which the human beings do not have any explanation. It's any unusual event which is attributed to a supernatural power or almighty God. The Holy Quran is the miracle of miracles. But for a modern man to accept any miracle, he will first analyze and verify it. Alhamdulillah, the Holy Quran proved itself to be a word of God 1400 years ago. Even today it can be analyzed and verified, and even in future, and it will always prove itself to be a word of Almighty God. It's a miracle of all times. Suppose a person says that he has done a miracle. I'd like to give an example of Baba Pilate who said, that he stayed underwater in a tank for three days. And when the reporters, when they wanted to examine the base of the tank, he said, how can you examine the womb of the mother which gives birth to the child? And he prevented the reporters from examining the base of the tank. Will a modern man accept such miracles? If such miracles are the test, then you have to agree with me that P.C. Sarkar, who happens to be one of the leading magicians of the world, he will be considered as the best God-man alive today. Later on came the age of literature and poetry. Muslims and non-Muslims alike, they acclaim the Holy Quran to be the best Arabic literature available on the face of the earth. And the Holy Quran gives a challenge in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 23 and 24, where it says, مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ أَبْدِنَا And if you are in doubt as what we have revealed to our servant from time to time, فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّمْ مِسْلِي Then produce a surah somewhat similar to it. وَدْعُوا شُوَدَاءَكُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِكِينَ and call forth your witnesses and helpers if there are any besides Allah. But if your doubts are truthful, فَإِلَّمْ تَفْعَلُوا And if he cannot, وَلَمْ تَفْعَلُوا And of a surety you cannot, فَاتَّكُنْ نَارَ الَّتِي وَقُدُهَا النَّاسَ وَلِجَارَ وَإِدَّتْ لِلْكَافِرِينَ Then fear the fire which is prepared for those who reject faith, whose fuel shall be men and stones. For anyone 
to try and accept this challenge, but natural, the surah they produced should be in Arabic. There are certain surahs which are hardly three verses, hardly three sentences. The surah you produce should be in Arabic. The language should be as divine as that of the Holy Quran, as noble as the Holy Quran. The language of the Holy Quran is miraculous, is unsurpassable, intelligible. It has the highest rhetoric. And at the same time, it is very rhythmic. When anyone wants to praise a person or want to glorify anyone, he deviates away from reality. And the best example you can see is in the Hindi movies when the hero praises the heroine and he tries to please her and says, I will get for you the moon, I will get for you the star. The more you try and praise a person, the more you deviate away from reality. Alhamdulillah. Though the Quran is rhythmic, it does not deviate from reality. There were many people who tried to produce a surah like the Quran, but they failed miserably. No one has been able to do it so far, and no one, inshallah, will be able to do it till eternity. But suppose if I tell you that there's a religious scripture who says in a very poetic fashion that the world is flat. Will a modern man today believe? But natural, no, because today is not the age of literature and poetry. Today is the age of science and technology. So let's analyze today the Holy Quran and modern science, whether they conflict or conciliate. The Quran and modern science, whether they contradict or they're compatible. According to the famous physicist Albert Einstein, who had got a Nobel Prize, he said, science without religion is lame, and religion without science is blind. I would like to repeat it. Albert Einstein said that science without religion is lame, and religion without science is blind. I would like to remind you that the Holy Quran is not a book of science, S-C-I-E-N-C-E, -E, but it's a book of signs, S-I-G-N-S. -S. It's a book of ayats. And there are more than 6,000 signs or 6,000 ayats, out of which more than 1,000 speak about science. There are some people who will be satisfied just by acquiring one sign. Some people require 10 signs to accept the truth. Some may require 100, while the others, even after you produce 1,000 signs to them, yet they will not accept the truth. As far as my talk today will be concerned, I will only be speaking about those scientific facts which have been established. I will not be speaking about theories which are based on assumptions and hypotheses. Because we know very well that many a times, science based on theories and hypotheses, it takes U-turns. In the field of astronomy, if you ask a scientist that how was our universe formed? How did it come into existence? So he will tell you about the Big Bang Theory.